The evolution of life is affected by variations of atmospheric oxygen levels and the geomagnetic field. These are known. And there is scientific data to prove this. Evolution of life is affected by variations of atmospheric oxygen. Since the very beginning, as a paleoclimatologist, I can tell you that life on Earth exploded once the oxygen levels were high enough to sustain life at every level, beginning in the oceans and then extending out into land. Only when the oxygen levels were high enough did land plants emerge, the first grasses, and so on and so forth. But the current idea of evolution that you're being taught is nonsense. There is no missing link. We did not evolve from apes. But we will be consumed by artificial intelligence, if we let it. Now, some of the better scientists are actually uh, giving you some good information that what has happened over a period of millions of years is that different species have emerged instantaneously, rapidly, every 12,000 years or so, there is a rapid change in genetics. There is no evolution. There are evolutionary leaps. There is punctuated equilibria. There are times of instantaneous geologic change in species where millions of species are lost and millions of species are gained all at the same time. Not like this. But controlled by something more like this. The newest databases available for the Phanerozoic illustrate that geomagnetic reversal rate increases and the atmospheric oxygen level decreases. Marine diversity shows gradual patterns of mass extinction lasting extended periods of time as a result. This has everything to do with our magnetic field and our sun. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> Now, the sun produces solar wind, and our magnetosphere protects us from that. This glorious structure right here. Typically, it's dipolar and very strong. And the more the sun outputs, the stronger our magnetosphere gets. But we're headed into a grand minima, and the magnetosphere is collapsing. Not only that, the polarity is shifting. Now, if you watch us over our videos with uh, Maverick Star Reloaded, we're putting magnetometers all across North America so we can monitor the change in the dipole strength so that we can know if there is an acceleration happening because oxygen escapes from the Earth during geomagnetic reversals and there are implications for mass extinction. Now, if you come over to the mainstream USGS, this is what you get. Do any mass extinctions correlate with magnetic reversals? And their answer is no. There is no evidence of a correlation between mass extinctions and magnetic pole reversals. Which is why I want to tell you that they're lying to you. Because as early as 1985, 
magnetic reversals and mass extinctions were investigated scientifically and there was no conclusion the conclusion was there is no conclusion there's mixed data and as early as June of 2014 a paper coming out that we just showed you concluded that Earth's magnetic flips may have triggered these mass extinctions. The exact opposite of what NASA and NOAA say. The opposite. It's like opposite world. I think I erased that page. No, I erased that one. So, I'm going to go a little deeper for you and do my own investigation. Here are the range of dated extinctions in the last 100,000 years. Calcium concentration in parts per billion represent massive mass extinction spikes. Younger Dryas event here, this spike. And we have a spike here and a spike here. It's many spikes. But if we simply come look at a magnetic reversal chart, we can see that at all of these spikes, 12,000 years ago, there was a magnetic reversal, the Gothenburg. And at 23,000 years ago, this massive mass extinction, there was a magnetic reversal, the Mon Mono Lake. And at 33,000 years ago, there was a spike, mass extinction, corresponding to the Lake Mungo magnetic excursion. And at 47,000 years ago, the Land Champ, right there. Like swimwear. The Blake excursion at right before a hundred kill a year. Are you picking it up? The data is right in their face. And the only one that's putting it down is Robert W. Felix. Back in 2008, magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps. The true origin of species. Inspired by the works of Niles Eldridge and punctuated equilibria, Stephen Jay Gould. Robert Felix, who will be at LeCon the third week, second week of May, will be discussing these magnetic reversals and evolutionary leaps which we just correlated for you right before your very eyes. Climate change is not to blame for late quaternary megafauna extinctions in Australia. Now, if you look at this paper, another recent one, what do you think we're going to find? What do you think we're going to find right here? The Landshamp magnetic reversal corresponding to the mass extinction right here. All of the magnetic reversals correspond to all of the mass extinctions that they were trying to explain using climate change. Heads up. Quaternary extinction events occurring at magnetic reversal points. Three, five, and seven. The most recent extinction event, eliminating almost 65% of megafauna in North America, also associated with a magnetic excursion. Mass extinction events and coral reef growth, also all linked for the last 500 million years to magnetic reversals. The facts are in. Stars make water and shoot them like bullets. And then you die. Now, the beautiful thing as we close up here about the scenario and the data I just gave you is that the majority of life continues. The majority of life on Earth continues. 
And there's a number of reasons for that. Our magnetosheath and our magnetosphere is so strong that even in the largest blast zone with the weakest magnetosphere, there will be an atmosphere, even if it's 5,000 feet high. For as long as we have the amount of water we have on Earth, our atmosphere will remain, even if it is, let's say, perturbed or dwindled on a certain section or side of the Earth, pushed away, it will return. There will probably never be a point where there will be no air to breathe if you're down low on the surface. Because the magnetosphere is like a shell. It can get smushed, but it can't, can't be broken. And there's a pressure boundary where the air will be compressed so much into a small space that you'll be able to breathe freely. So don't worry about needing oxygen tanks just yet. Worry about the cosmic rays that cause the mass extinction. The burning boreal forests that ignite half of the earth. Worry about that. And know that evolution will happen and we will make it. We always do. No matter what we look like, we make it. Be safe. We love you.